All right, tonight I'm going to make one of the easiest um, and most delicious things uh, that I make and you can easily, easily make too. I'm going to make fajitas. So, uh, I'm going to show you the simplest way. This is uh, frozen pepper and onion strips. Perfect. Absolutely perfect uh, for fajitas. Now, you know if there's a good one because that is the only ingredients. The ingredients are onions, green peppers, red peppers, yellow peppers. This is about as fucking basic as it gets. Um, these are beef strips, chicken strips. Uh, if you want to be fancier and healthier, obviously you can just buy steak, cut it yourself, chicken, cut it yourself. But this is for step health. So if you're not used to cooking, you're not used to eating healthy, great way to start off. Just uh, try to, you know, look at the ingredients on it. Uh, the cheapest ones are probably not the best ones. Don't have to go super expensive though either. You know, I mean, just look. If it's a whole bunch of shit you never heard of in the ingredients, don't buy it. You want minimally processed if you're going to be eating processed. We need add uh, leafy greens, of course, taco seasoning, chives, a little bit of lime juice, salt. Not too much salt. Taco seasoning, really don't need salt. Um, a little bit of salt, pepper, cumin. Uh, red pepper, spice it up, turmeric, of course, and I will make guacamole. So here are two avocados. With the avocados, with the guacamole, um, I'll also add some salsa. And uh, actually, I'll show you that separately. So I'm going to start off by uh, turning the stove on. Got it set to six. For now, um, avocado oil. You can use a different type of oil if you'd like, but avocado oil is extremely uh, healthy. Uh, it's really, really healthy fat. We used to use grapeseed oil also. Um, it's fine. Whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. There's that, if you have more, which you will use. You don't really have to use too much. Just enough to get like a layer in the pan is good. I'll put the vegetables in. Let it cook just a little bit before I start putting the seasoning on. Um, just my own personal preference. I do it that way because when they start to cook and it's wet, season will stick. Here's the beef and the chicken. I'm gonna put that in the microwave. Eh, decent amount. I'll put it in for like two and a half minutes. actually like cook it and I'll put it on thaw. Oh, I'm not afraid to cook things frozen. Um, chicken, you need thawed enough to be able to cut. So you can like trim the fat and you know cartilage and stuff like that. But um I don't mind. I almost prefer probably cooking uh, frozen or at least partially frozen meat 
Uh, it could be completely off, but I don't really have problems with it being dry. That is one of uh, my theories as to why when I make chicken and stuff, it's almost never ever dry. Uh, I'm not afraid of putting it in the oven or whatever I'm doing with it. Frozen. Or partially frozen. Alright, now like I said, these are they're, it's still cold, cold, this is far from cooked, but it's enough where the seasoning will stick to it. Okay, so this is the taco seasoning. And using this may very well not be the first time that you're seeing me do this or something very, very similar to this. I don't know the order in which you can watch these videos, but I did it with uh, elk, I think, or venison, ground. You can do a ground beef, too. Whatever you want. You can go straight chicken, straight steak, and pork. I've used pulled pork for this, too. I guess you call it carnitas. Because that's what you'd be doing with it. Right now I'm making it Mexican. And that's good. All right, there you go. This is the uh, steak and the chicken. After cooked two and a half minutes in the microwave, not fully cooked, not fully frozen. Put a little bit of turmeric in here. So to use the turmeric uh, for the anti inflammatory. Factors. Some pepper. Spice it up a little bit. Not too much, just a little. Flavor it up. Um, I'm not going to do it too, too much because, uh, you know, if you want it spicier, you can add hot sauce or salsa to it, those types of things. Um, you know, so if it's too spicy right off the bat before anything's added to it, then you lose out on the uh, ability to have hot sauce and salsa and stuff, which I like. I like hot sauce, I like salsa, and if it's uh, too spicy before you can start, it's going to just defeat the entire purpose and you're able to use it at all. Get warm. Throw the meat in here too. Of course, just mix it around. Like I said, I like. I'm sure I probably repeat this on every one of these, but I like flavors to be even. So I mix everything, fold everything on top of each other, mix it up, try to make sure that I get the flavors evenly distributed, so I want all the flavors that I just put on the onions and peppers to get all over the meat, the uh, beef and the chicken. Ooh. And I almost forgot, something I just started adding uh, a couple months back is tequila. Not too much. I don't know, probably about a shot and a half or so worth there. You know, just a shot or two of tequila. Um, you can taste it, but you let it cook long enough and it cooks the alcohol out, so you don't have to worry about um, you know, feeding alcohol your family. And I'm going to eat this and go straight to work. Again, this is dinner for three. We'll have a little bit of leftovers. You know, just adjust the portions for uh, however many people you're cooking for or how much leftovers you want. Leftovers are definitely 
I think a good thing. The, one of the best parts about especially making this, um, I did the same thing when I used the ground uh, game meat, whatever you use. If you have a little bit of leftovers, you have your meal for the next day too because you can take that little bit of leftovers you just mix it with scrambled eggs add a little bit more of the seasoning like i'll use um a little bit more of the taco seasoning a little bit more pepper you know whatever to add to the eggs so it doesn't just dilute the flavor but you know you could take a quarter of this or less and um definitely a quarter of it mix it with uh scrambled eggs and now you hit breakfast burritos. The lime juice. Just put some ant in here too. And that's it. We are fucking ready to go. So I'm just gonna let that cook. I'm gonna cover it. I like covering it too. Um, Flavor set in, locked in there pretty good. Get the greens before I do that. And I'm just going to take a fistful. Run it under the cold water in the sink. Rinse it off more. I mean, it says it's triple washed and ready to eat, but I don't know. I'm sure you can't really be too safe when it comes to avoiding uh, bacteria. You know, you don't want E. coli and fucking salmonella and stuff for yourself or your family. So that was one fistful. There's another you know it looks ridiculous in terms of uh, the amount that's in there for now, but this wilts and goes down to nothing, absolutely nothing. So I'm actually going to add one more. I like getting every flavor that I have in the pan over everything that's in the pan. So I'm just going to mix it up a little bit. Cook, cover it. We've got the oven set to 6. Right now it is 6.04 p.m. I'm aiming to eat in about 24. 25 to 35 minutes. Turn it down to 5 on the stove. Don't have it set too high. Five over there. So I don't want it set too high because I don't. Uh, don't want to overdo it. Alright, so for the guacamole. I'm using uh, three small avocados, normal size, I guess. Um, now, my technique is I cut down into the seed, and then I turn it as I cut it. Keeps me usually pretty safe from even worry about whether or not I'm going to cut myself. Open it up. Take the spoon. Scoop out the inside. And 
both sides. Just like that. And now here's a really good tip for you. Uh, if you leave the seed in there, it keeps the guacamole from turning brown. So same thing. Cut the next one. Open it. Probably don't need two seeds. So we're gonna leave one in there. To uh, make good guacamole, you're gonna add some salsa. So I'm gonna mix like you know, like two tablespoons. So it's Definitely enough, but not too much. The key uh, ingredient for guacamole too is cumin. Cumin is really, really is good. So you're gonna add some cumin in there. Salt, of course. You have to salt guacamole. Not too, too much. Uh, pepper. And that's it. You just take a fork and mush it up. mash it to whatever consistency you want. You don't have to do it too much. I just actually like to kind of mix it to try to make sure uh, I get all the seasoning spread evenly. And that's it, like I said, if you leave the pit in, it won't turn uh, brown anywhere near as quickly. It'll make it last a lot, 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 lot longer. Those two actually ended up being a pretty good amount. So I think I'm going to save that third one. If we need it and we want more, I'll make more. It doesn't, I mean, you saw how quick and easy that is. Um, very simple to add to it. Very simple to add to that. Guacamole, super quick, easy, delicious, and nutritious. It is high in calories, but it's high in quality calories. It's a really, really healthy fat and um, uh, nutrient dense. So, my tip too is you usually you don't really need to worry about calories as much uh, if as long as there's nutrients that go with them. problem people have is eating high calorie and low nutrient food because that just doesn't do anything for you. So guacamole you can eat, it's filling, delicious, you saw how quick and easy it is to make and it goes with a million different things. These are great too, this, uh, who makes this? Lighthouse. I have the chives and the basil. It's just uh, dehydrated. So it's great. It really is very, very, very close to eating fresh, uh, fresh stuff. So I really like it. We use it a lot for just about everything. <coughs> and that's it. So there you go. We're going to have that guacamole 
maybe put a little uh, salsa on there. Hot sauce if you want, if it's not hot enough for you. However you want to do it. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. It'll keep the videos coming. You guys keep watching.